<sighs> it's only the preseason, it's only the preseason, it's only the gosh darn preseason, and it's only been one game. We can't make any conclusions about anything based off of one preseason game, but darn it man, does this not sting. The Florida Panthers yesterday played their first preseason game against the Nashville Predators, and in the lineup of this new Florida team was one former Vancouver Canucks defenseman that I thought we would never talk about again. A guy who was involved in arguably the worst trade in Vancouver Canucks history in terms of what the trade accomplished, what it set the team up to do, the motivations and the intention behind the trade, Jim Benning going out there and trying, pleading to the hockey gods one more time to give his team a playoff run. But no, this trade failed, it was a bad trade, and the Canucks ended up buying out Oliver Ekman Larson a few years later. I didn't think we would ever be making another video about Oliver Ekman freaking Larson after the two years he had spent in Vancouver, where admittedly his point production wasn't terrible 29 points in 79 games in his first season, 22 points in 54 games his second season. So, not the worst point production in the world, but for a guy that was making 7 point something mil against the Canucks cap, and when it comes to Ekman Larson not really being the top tier offensive defenseman like he had been in Arizona, there definitely was so much more to be left desired from this situation. And it's not even like he was a terrible player, like he was not bad in his own zone, he could move sort of, and his hockey brain was not inept, he was totally fine as a National Hockey League player, but he was like a three, three and a half million dollar caliber guy not a seven point something mil. So the Canucks had to buy him out. He was disappointing. He had been this amazing offensive defenseman in Arizona, overstayed his welcome over there, got the payday, got sent over to Vancouver in a desperate attempt for Jim Benning to make the playoffs. It didn't work. And now he had signed with the Panthers. We didn't make a video talking about, yeah, the Florida Panthers signed Oliver Ekman Larson. The deal, just in case you're looking, $2.25 million a year. It's a one-year contract where OEL is going to try to bolster up his player profile to get more money in next year's free agency, because we all know that his play in Vancouver did not do him any favors for his reputation. And after OEL signed, I was like, okay, I mean, we're making videos on everything that's going on in the NHL, all the signings, all the trades, it's fine. I don't really want to make a video about OEL signing with the Panthers, though. It doesn't really fit. Like, it doesn't feel like something I think is worth talking about. Yeah, bum defenseman in Vancouver signed a contract with another team. Okay, he'll go to Florida now and he'll be fine, right? Well, guess what? The first preseason game, Florida versus Nashville, got done yesterday. And Oliver Ekman Larson had three assists. Oh man, like, uh, you watch some of these plays, you watch where he's being put, and you see the passes he's able to make, and it's like, why? How did he do that? Why is he doing that now? The one assist that stands out to me is the one on the power play where Oliver Ekman Larson takes the puck behind his own goal, and instead of just doing the regular old Canucks play where he skates up to center ice, drops it back at the face-off circle, and then lets the center, the trailing center, come in and take it, Ekman Larson sets up his guy in front with a huge stretch pass from his own zone right through the neutral zone onto the stick of E2 Lusterainen, who comes right in and scores. This was the 2-0 goal in the game, and Oliver Ekman Larson putting on display that elite passing ability that he just did not show off in Vancouver. Like, where was that stretch pass with the Canucks? He spent two years here, and that's the first time I've seen him do that, at least in a sweater after the Arizona Coyotes, but like, oh my goodness, dude, that, that was like some Eric Carlson type passing right there. Swedish defenseman, right? But OEL was placed onto the power play. I get it, it's the preseason, doesn't really matter. The lineups are all whack, nobody plays where they're supposed to play in the regular season. Maybe OEL doesn't even get power play time with the regular Panthers in 23-24, who knows? But just this showcase of one game where he comes onto the lineup and he's like, yeah, I need to show off that I'm still, like, good. 
I'm better than I was in Vancouver. He goes out there and does just that. Here's the big head hockey tweet of OEL in two periods. So not even including the secondary assist he had had in the third period. In the first two periods of the game, 14-15 time on ice, two assists, one of them primary, two points, one shot, one penalty drawn, and two takeaways. 60.5% 5v5 expected goals for percentage. What the hell? Who saw this coming? Okay, maybe some of y'all did. I did see some satirical comments poking fun at the Canucks saying, oh yeah, look at that. OEL's going to revive his career with the Florida Panthers. He's going to go over there to Sunrise and he's going to be an immediate top four guy. He's going to get 40 points and he's going to make the Canucks look silly because they did not get that out of him. And I'm not going to let one preseason game shape my entire perception because obviously OEL is going to play more games and there are going to be times where he has zero points, fewer points, maybe he'll have a stretch of games where he doesn't score a point. The reason I say that is because last year, he did exactly that. I mean, the guy had three points in the month of February, four points in January, four points in December, six points in November, and five points in October, with multiple zero-point games sprinkled around in there in long streaks. He would get a point every what, three, four games? There was one stretch in January where he went pretty much half the month without scoring a point. Like, OEL was such an intriguing defenseman because of the profile of what he was. He's like the Louis Erickson on defense, where, sure, he's a serviceable player, he's got a hockey mind that works, but when it comes to offense, when it comes to what the Canucks are paying him to be, he just didn't show. Of course, different circumstances. Erickson was a free agent, OEL was a trade acquisition, but still, OEL in Arizona was a guy that made himself known as an absolute beast. 40-point years, 50-point years, it's why he got the payday he did. But that version of him doesn't exist anymore. Unless the Florida Panthers are able to dig it out somewhere from his subconscious. So, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about OEL having such an amazing game in the preseason against the Nashville Predators. It is one game, it is the preseason, this does not matter. OEL could score three points in the entire first two months of the regular season, and this commentary would have been forgotten. But for now, for Canucks fans who are paying attention to some of the other Canucks who have been suiting up in preseason games around the NHL, this one stings the most. Because if OEL was just a legit top four offensive defenseman with Vancouver last year, then things would have been a lot better. Sure, seven point something mil, still not worth it. But if he was even a shade of a five or a six million dollar caliber defenseman, if he consistently got 35 to 40 points on the Vancouver Canucks blue line, there would have been so much more support for this dude. But he just couldn't do it. He was the bane of the Canucks cap existence, and there was nothing in his game that signified that it was worth the dollar amount they were paying him. So now he's making two point something mil, and he's playing a lot better. Hi, yeah, yeah. If he has a huge rejuvenation revival for his career, then I don't even know what to say. Hockey gods, you can't keep on writing this script all over again. Former Canucks improving so much when they go back to the Florida Panthers. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Oliver ekman Larson and how the chances of him having a legit redemption season in Florida are not zero, especially based off of the game we had seen yesterday. Sure, preseason, whatever. But thoughts in the comments section either way, all your opinions about this. Where do you think OEL is going to fit into this Panthers lineup? If you're a Panthers fan, I know some of y'all do exist. Don't worry, I'm not going to meme on your team saying you guys have no fans. The building gets pretty loud when you guys are winning a bunch of playoff games. But if you're a Florida Panthers fan, what are your thoughts on OEL and how he played yesterday? What are your thoughts on where he slots into the lineup full time? And do you think he actually does have a chance at reviving his career? Over under 20 points. How far away is your prediction for his point production for 23-24? Thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.